Hello everybody, Sunday Adelaide here. I uh, want to just uh, welcome you to another program today where we are finding out what is wrong with the black race. Is there anything wrong with us? Uh, are black African people cursed? And um, are Africans cursed? No, they are not. So why are we in the situation we are right now? Because of the circle of history, number one. And secondly, because of idolatry. It is idolatry that made black people to lose their greatness of the past and their civilization. And it is uh, idolatry that destroyed that civilization and it destroys every other civilization henceforth. This, it even destroyed the greatest civilization that has ever existed, the civilization of um, Rome, Rome and the Greek civilization. All were destroyed just because of idolatry. So uh, that's why God said we shouldn't have any other God beside him. So please go ahead and share this message. Share, share, share. Let's share the message with as many people as possible. Uh, are black African people cause? No. They are blessed and they have been a blessing to the rest of the world. So today I'm going to be talking about the African origins of China and Southeast Asia. The African origin of China and Southeast Asia. So Africa it has been a blessing to the rest of the world, to the whole world, including Asia, including China, including Japan, and including all parts of the world. And let's go and find that out right now. A research, the results of which were published in Los Angeles Times in September 98, shows that a big part of present-day Chinese population which is one-fifth one fifth of the currently living Chinese have genetic African roots in them. Black African roots. This is not just history. This is fact of the day. Today, every fifth Japan, uh, Chinese have African blood in them. <laughs> when you are thinking of them as one billion something, almost two billion people, one fifth of them are Africans. Archaeology professor of Harvard University, the Chinese archaeologist, who is a Chinese man himself, Kuang Xin Chang, <laughs> writes that presence of Africans in China has been discovered throughout all ancient China period. So, according to his own research, this is not just a new discovery. It is not a new discovery because it has been a discovery that has been there over the ages. So, Africa has been great before. Africa has been a blessing to the world. Africa is great now. Only we are going through remission or recession. But, people like me, we are going back to Africa to make it great again. So, um, you know, we just need to reclaim the glory and it will come back sooner or later because the last shall be first and the first shall be last. A relatively recent work of historian James Branson, 1985, shows that black people took active part in the historic period of China. Historic period is since history started being recorded. In China, blacks were always present and blacks were always being recognized. The ancient Shang dynasty of China apparently had black roots. That is the ancient Shang dynasty. That was the biggest and the oldest China dynasty in China, which was 1,600 years before Christ. This dynasty had black roots. The dynasty itself <laughs> had black roots. Thus, the Zhu dynasty that overthrew the Shang dynasty described the Shang as having black and oily skin. The one that overtook them started criticizing them and using their skin and using their complexion and to to uh, to to rebuke, I mean, to laugh at them. So look at the 
earliest, some of the earliest um, busts and uh, archaeological discoveries that people found in Asia and in China. So let, let, let's look at the skull. This skull, if you write, read, read what is written under it, adult male skull, as it is seen, it is a male skull for an adult. So, yep. And, uh, I say, let's be Pakazi, what Bashimi book where me, I see. Dwa. Dana Vesica, Mosna. I'm getting a vote on a day. Dada. So you see that the die is not Kadai Mupadaiti, Mosna. Kadati Obirus to be a mock Padaiti over in Nipadai Distras of Patana than that. So you see that it is adult male skull from Upper Cave uh, Zukudian site in China. So this skull was found in China and it is estimated to be much older than 10,000 years before Christ. 10,000 years. And this, this skull is that of a black man. Can you believe it? Now let's look at the other one, the bust, the upper caveman. Let's look at the other one, the other bust that we see here. It is an albinos. Albinos routinely, routinely create the forensic bust representing early humans. And in that enterprise, they invariably create busts with which look as Central Asian European as possible so as to suggest that they too are original humans. This particular bust is intended to represent late Pleistocene blacks, Melanesians in China. This, that also is a black, this bust here, which is the cave, is called Upper Cave Man, is the, the, the bust of a face of an African man in China. So, you see what we're talking about? The, I'm talking about the earliest times. The earliest of time. The earliest of time, that is when we're talking about, that is when, it, you know, the, the first civilization is a black civilization. And we already spoke about that. The earliest civilization, the first civilization is the Kushite civilization or the Ethiopian civilization. So that civilization was uh, in Nubia, in the, the modern day, uh, the capital of it was in modern day Sudan, and but it spread, it, it spread to Egypt and Libya and Ethiopia of today and Kenya and all those other places, it's at also Nigeria. So that is how, you know, the, the, the ancient civilization, the, the, the very first civilization of black people uh, move from there and I also explained to you also that all these nations China and all, even the continents and Australians and Americans and Europeans all of them were in one continent together all of them were on one continent together it was a monolith continent that the earth was monolith at that point and so people from and you know I also proved to you in the beginning that uh, black people were the origin of civilization and the earliest black people uh, the earliest people on earth actually lived on the African continent and that it is from there they spread all over so they spread all over even prior to the division of continents so that's that could explain why they are all everywhere first states of Southeast Asia appeared by the end of the third century so the first states, the first nations of Southeast Asia, because it's not just China that has the uh, Africans as their phobias. It's not just China, but all the Southeast Asian states also had 
uh, the their route to the to, to the black race. But the those countries started, you know, China is the one of the oldest country, oldest countries there. But the other countries, a lot of people migrated also from China to those places. So these states, these countries in Southeast Asia uh, started appearing in the third century. This region originally attracted attention as a rich source of coral, f f forest, and mineral products, all of which were extremely valuable. The first state of Southeast Asia was Funan, that was situated in present-day southern Kampushia, Cambodia, or Kampushia, now it's called Cambodia, and Vietnam. So that was the name of this country at that time. It was called Southern Cam uh, It was called uh, Funan. Okay, there you see here. You see Cambodia there, and you see Vietnam beside it, Laos, Thailand. So this is in that area. The biggest part of knowledge about ancient history of this region is based on Chinese and Indian sources because they were the most biggest influence. Uh, I'm still going to talk about India and the inf and the origins of the black origin of Indians. And we are going to go back to that as well. But let's finish this one, the black origin of Chinese and, uh, yeah, and the Asian countries. So Chinese histor historical documents when talking about Funan citizens, the founders of the first state of Southeast Asia described them as ugly and black with curly hair. So it's the same thing. They are calling, you remember the, the, the rulers of Chinese, China were called blacks and they were called and described with their uh, hair that is curly hair like our own because Asians normally have straight hair, but these are black people that have curly hair. And Europeans also have straight hair. So we see here that uh, the, the founders of the civilization of Asia that is now broken down into many countries, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, and all these countries were rulers, the rulers of them. Not just the people who were there, but they were the rulers were black people, black people. And they, even Chinese recognized that. The Chinese people also had black rulers at the time, but even much later, this was even much later than the Chinese people. They, they were talking about, uh, this was after the birth of Christ. They were still talking about black rulers. Kem, Kmen people, representatives of the same group of people, are described by Chinese as small and black, you see. So they were describing these people the, in that Southeast Asia as black people. Now let's look at what archaeologists and historians, the Europeans, have to say about this. Harvard University anthropologist Roland Dixon noted that the ancient men had the following physical features. So let's let's see the way they describe them. These are not Africans describing them. These are not, you know, it's not revisionism. It's not an attempt to rewrite history. This is what happened and see what other people who don't have any interest in changing history or praising black people, people who are just neutral, let's see how they describe the ancient Asians and people of Southeast Asia. Even though they are not black, so they could not be interested in rewriting history in favor of blacks. Many of them are not in favor of blacks, but they are, it's just a, as an historical fact and historical evidence that cannot be denied. These are their discoveries. So we don't have any basis to doubt that until we discover something otherwise, historically and archaeologically. So how do they describe these uh, Eastern uh, Asians? Short people, very short stature, dark skin, you see, dark skin, curly and even frizzy hair, white noses, you see, and white negroid lips black lips negroid means black lips lips of black people so now let's look at some photographs of africans being the origin uh, the africans origins in china 
let's look at some of the photographs that we you know that we're able to gather these are you know because of mixture because of the mixture of uh, race and mixture of people and because of the emission that is coming from the from the air and from the equator and uh, from the sun and the black people are remaining black are even becoming darker but over there because they have changed and they have moved to brighter places so of course they don't have that intensity of you know being you know, remaining as black as african like we are in africa because to add, you know temperature the atmosphere the climate everything influences your you know the the way you look so some photos let's look at some photos here now these are chinese and when you look at these photos you can see that you know many of them are resembling and resemblant to africans very very similar to african people and you can still see that there is that like they have some african blood in them for sure and this was as recent as 1930 this century or last century so this was still recent okay look at these people for example here especially the grandmother there looks absolutely like an african grandmother see these photographs this were recent this were recent history of china and you could see that these people are having some black coloration in them you see the, the pigment the pigmentation cannot be denied as black and this are china these are all in china this is all in china these are all chinese recent history despite the mixture you could still see some traces despite the mixture you can still see some traces of black blood in all these people yep Okay, let's go to other parts of uh, the Middle East, I mean the uh, Far East. Uh, these are not Middle East, I think these are Far East. So some photos of the Af or some Africans in the Far East. Oh, where are the photos? Uh, okay, this is Middle East, yeah, this is Iran. And this is the ancient... Uh, of drawings the elamites in iran and they are black people in iran these are the old ancient ones almost like you remember they look similar to what you will see in egypt and you remember we spoke about the fact that the people who lived in egypt the, the earliest pharaohs were black people and you can see that it is the same kind of people that moved to this area of uh, persia and you could see that they were drawn like black people as well but let's first of all read into to see uh, the or the influence of black africans in the middle east you have an image of the skull of uh cuisine found in modern day israel okay where is that image i think we already had it right the skull yeah, I think we had this call. There is this call. Yeah, this this is another skull. This is the one found in. There is a similar skull like that that was found in Israel. Okay, it's called uh, Kwafze skull found in Israel. This skull is that of the first 
inhabitant of Asia, the oldest modern man found outside of Africa. So the oldest, uh, the oldest modern man found outside of Africa was found in Israel, and he was the oldest person that was found in, Af in uh, Asia. And that skull of the man that was found in Asia, the oldest man that was found in Asia, was a black man's skull. You see, you see that the oldest skull, the oldest archaeological discovery of a man that was found in Asia was that of a black man. So how could a black man <laughs> die in find his way to Asia? And there's no other skull that is there apart from a black man's skull. And he's the oldest that has been found. So the oldest modern man found outside of Africa, because the oldest before them was Africa. They found the oldest skulls in Africa, the oldest archaeological discovery in Africa to discover that yes, the earliest people live in Africa. But outside, apart from Africa, all the other things they were finding were in Africa. The old ones are, but the ones that was found that was older uh, than any other place apart from Africa was found in Asia, and it was a black man again. The anatomically modern man was born in Africa two hundred thousand years ago, in the Great Lakes region. That same place, Sudan, uh, Uganda, Kenya. Mm, Ethiopia, that you know, that owes that is everything is confirming the fact that we have been talking about that the greatest and the oldest and the first civilization started in Africa, and this is also the confirmation of that. So this person, even though he died in Asia and he was discovered in Asia, but he was born in Africa, more exactly in the valley of the Omo in Ethiopia, near Kenya and the Sudan, you see, that's the whole place where the ancient Ethiopia was. And it was 100,000 years later that the African man ex 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 existed his uh, historical credo to go and populate the rest of the planet, Asia first. Amazing. From Palestine to the Philippines, passing by Arabia and China. So the, what he's saying here is that Africans, you know, even though the bone that the head that was found was two hundred thousand years uh, uh, bone because it was one like that, but the population of the whole uh, Earth and that part of the world, Asia, happened, you know, much later. You know, maybe that other person where a few people went earlier, but the real population of the whole Earth was hundred hundred year hundred thousand years later. From Palestine to the Philippines, passing by Arabia and China, Asia was therefore populated at the earlier times by black people. That is what we will see in this article, uh, which with the exception of Arabia, whose settlement was abundantly discussed here. So this is uh, the diagram from Middle East, from uh, Iran the Elamites, they call them in Iran. In present-day Iran lives the Elamites, and they are still there to today. <laughs> the French archaeologist Marcel Auguste uh, de la Foy, who participated in the excavations of the vestiges of Elam at the beginning of the 20th century, described the, scu the sculptures of richly dressed kings and covered with jewelry and feline skins like in Africa, you see, the skin, look at the hands, look at the hands, and look at the face. This is how Africans were drawn that time. And this could not be altered because it has been done a long time ago. And whose skin was black? He concluded there is therefore the greater likelihood that the Elam had been the prerogative of a black dynasty. The Greek scholar uh, Herodotus, nicknamed the father of history, and having visited the region in the 5th century before Christ, described the presence of blacks with straight hair, while white migration coming from Euro-Asia would absorb these black people 
through interracial mixing. So what changed the look of Iranians right now? It is immigration of other people from other continents and from other places that, you know, that cause the black people to be absorbed and interracially mixed. The blacks of the Indians seem to be of Sudanese, Egyptian origin. As a considerable part, you remember that the, the original Egypt was black, and they used to call themselves Kem, uh, Kem, something like that, Kem, 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 because they were black people, and that means black-skinned people, before the Greeks started calling them Egyptians. So as a considerable part of the blacks in Africa, Diodorus of Sicily continues saying, from Ethiopia, that is to say Sudan in ancient Greek, E, Osiris, divine ancestors of the Egyptians, resumed its route through the Arabia along the coast of the Sea of Eritrea and walked to the Indies and up to the end of the inhabited earth. You see, he's describing the migration how it started from Ethiopia or from Sudan now to Egypt and from there to uh, this modern day Eritrea and then the Arabia, you know, uh, coast, uh, Middle East, and yeah, that's how black people inhabited and populated Asia. Those blacks were of, at the origin of the brilliant civilization of the Indus Valley between present day Pakistan and India, the first monumental civilization of Asia which culmination began uh, circa two, 2200. The arrival of the white man in the region is perfectly documented. So these are the vestiges of black civilization of the Indus Valley in India and Pakistan, India Pakistan area. Because the black people got there to India and Pakistan and built this. And it's still, um, still a this was the discovery, the vestige discovery, which also reminds us of what they had done in Sudan and in, uh, in Ethiopia. All the area that matches Myanmar, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Indonesia was inhabited in the first times by black people. It is from there that some would depart to go and populate Australia 50,000 50, years ago. Those are the blacks who were and are always designated by the term Negrito. So look at these photographs now. To the left, the Negrito of Malaysia. Can you believe it? That is Malaysia right there. Black people in Malaysia. To the right, the King Sisowat of Cambodia. It was obviously a, with a mix of black and Mong it was a mix of black and Mongo. So you see the king, they see, you see the children, all those children are in Malaysia. That is Malaysia, black people in Malaysia, European person was, went there and they were shocked to discover that there are still black, there are black people still at that point alive in Malaysia. Then the king, you see the king there, that is a king uh, of uh, Cambodia and it was a black person. But it, it was obvious that it was mixed. He had a mixture of uh, Mongol and black. <laughs> These Negrito are at the origin of many civilizations in the region with a system of matrilinear royal succession unique to the black world. They too would also have been partly absorbed by the Mongolian element. And look at this young woman of mixed parentage of blacks and Mongols. So these are also a mixture of blacks and Mongols. But these are now Indonesia. In Indonesia. This was a century ago, a long time. Not not too long in history from history's perspective. This Australian grandmother know that the main difference between the Chinese grandmother and the Australian grandmother is the darker skin and the lack of the uh, epicantic fold on the Aust Aust uh, Australian woman. Shoom, time it your discussion. Finally, the first inhabitants of the Philippines were blacks of pygmy type, 
called the actor, according to African American historian Runoko Rashidi. They lived today in small number, but here is what the Spanish settlers said of them in the 16th, 17th century. The Negritos, Negritos is falling from black, from the word black. Negritos encountered by our first conquerors, got off video, but just uh, by our first conquerors are according to the tradition, the first in the possession of the islands of this archipelago. archipelago. Can you imagine it? So these people, when they went, went to the Philippines, they discovered that the first people that were living there were blacks. And they said, according to even their own tradition, these black people are the very first people to inhabit that place. Or again, there are Negroes in this island who do not pay tributes to anyone because they, they believe that's their land. See the way they used to look. These are inhabitants of the Philippines, the first inhabitants of the Philippines. This is in the Philippines. This is how they got, they, they recorded them back how many years ago? Let me say 16, 17 century. Yeah, that was like, uh, yeah, hundreds of years ago. This is also Philippines. You see, there are some mixture there, but they still carry a lot of black, even they are here. Still much of like that of the like that of Africans. We have in our possession the image of the Aino of Japan that we could not authenticate by reliable sources. This said, the clothing and hairstyles are clearly identical to all authentic images of the Aino that we have seen. We therefore conclude that this image is authentic. It can thus be seen that there are at least four blacks on this image. Okay. Yeah, on this image, the man in the no, this is not the image. The man in the front right appears as the most African of them all. Okay, this is the one, the Aino of Japan. This is the image here. Okay, let me read that again. We have in our possession the image of the Aino of Japan that we could not authenticate by reliable sources. This said, the clothing and hairstyles are clearly identical to all authentic images of the Aino that we have seen. We therefore conclude that this image is authentic. It can thus be seen that there are at least four blacks on this image. The man in the front right appears to be the most African of them all. Yeah. Amazing. Therefore, we can see the role of Africans in formation of the first civilizations in China and Southeast Asia. And now, let's move to the, yeah, so we are going to go out and talk about one of the greatest civilizations uh, of the ancient Asia, which was built by the black man. But that will be tomorrow. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. But before then, please, let's go and share this message. Share, share, share. Share the message to your friends and family members. And um, yeah, and if you want to join our mentorship program, go to my blog, sandadelajablog.com slash mentorship. If you want to come to the, our History Makers training, go to the blog as well, sandadelajablog.com slash HMT, History Makers training. If you want to go with us to Africa, the same thing, go to the blog, sandadelajablog.com slash Nigeria. If you want to get the book, same thing, sundayadelajablog.com slash books. So it's just sundayadelajablog.com and then slash whatever you want. And, uh, you know, we'll be, we'll be happy to, to have you here. But if you want to read my books for free, you can do that by going to Kindle Unlimited. But if you want to buy them in bulk, you could write to my office by writing to dsbooks at gmail.com. Thank you so much, everybody. And we will continue our teachings tomorrow peace we'll see the video i'm inviting you to stay back and watch the video so the video is going to go on now so go ahead and watch the video to confirm all the information i've given you thank you
When you read the European philosophers, what did they say? They often said that Africa had two great civilizations, Egypt in the north and Asia in the south. The white man said this. So they often, in, in ancient times, Asia was considered a part of Africa or Africa's second civilization. They said that you go to Asia and it's nothing but a carbon copy of Africa because it was settled by the Africans. A lot of people don't know that there are pyramids all over Asia and there are pyramids in, in China, in Japan. They have an underwater pyramid that a lot of people don't know about. And you can go there now. And that's one of those ancient mysteries. But again, pyramids are all over the planet. So in, in Asia today, you have pockets of black people. You have the Mani you have, in southern Thailand. You have a related group in northern Malaysia, sometimes called Sakai, S-E-K-A-I. You have the Andaman Islanders, and there are at least two groups. One group is called the Onje, O-N-G-E, or O-N-J-E, -E, I think it's O-N-G-E, and another is called the Jawara, J-A-R-A-W-A. And then you have black populations in the Philippines sometimes called Negritos or Eta, or I think we should call them Octa, which just means the people. You have a tradition of a similar group in Taiwan. These are the diminutive Africoids. These are the small blacks, similar in many ways to the Twa or so-called pygmies in Central Africa. These are very, very ancient people who left Africa perhaps 60, 70, maybe 100,000 years ago and became isolated. The Padong people, that's a group of people in Asia, and they, the women have these rings that they wear on their necks that's identical to an African tribe of women in East Africa who wear the same type of rings on their necks. So this just shows that the African-Asian connection is still there. They still carry on some of the African cultures and traditions in certain parts of Asia. I once had a professor of mine working on my doctorate tell me that she went to Japan and they went into the mountains of Japan. Now, this isn't a conscious woman uh, by most definitions, but she couldn't wait to come back and tell me this. She said, Umar, I was in Japan. We went up into the spiritual temples of Japan and we sat down in one of the temples waiting for the priest to come out and teach us a little bit about what they believe and what they stand for. She said, Umar, they walked out of the temples and their skin was just as black as ours. They had gray afros because they were elders. Now she said the phenotype looked like the modern uh, Asian, but she said the skin was black and they had gray afros, hair standing up on top like Don King. And she said it totally overcame me. They sat down and they began to talk. And she said, I couldn't believe these were black men. They were Japanese, but they were black men. When I went over to Indonesia, I went there at night and I would see billboards of very light skin, Asian Indonesian people and then when I went to my hotel I would go and watch these movies and I would see these very again light-skinned pale-skinned Indonesian Asian people but the next day when I went out into the streets of Indonesia everybody was either my color or darker I didn't see one person who looked like these people that were on the billboards and on television so they would pick and choose and get the whitest looking Asian people to promote in the media over there and when I walked around Indonesia, I saw people like jet black, dark. I ran into a couple of people with afros. I, I saw one Asian brother, full-blooded Asian guy with an afro, and I had to stop him. I said, brother, where are you from? And the brother was like, I'm, I'm from here, from right here in Indonesia. So that African presence, that African phenotype is still throughout Asia to this day. Look at the Buddha's hair. No Chinese person's hair look like that. The Buddha has knotty hair. Every time you see the Buddha, his hair is knotted. Just a thought. There's a painting called the Nambam painting of the Portuguese when they first go over to Japan. And when you look at this painting, the painting was made in around sometime in the 1500s, and it was the first eyewitness account of what they saw. Many of the Asian people there were dark-skinned, and half the people who were supposed to be Portuguese were dark-skinned. There's a tradition begun by a man named Alexander Francis Chamberlain, at least in April 1914, in a publication called the Journal of Race Development. And I can quote him almost exactly. And he says, and even in far off Japan, 
we can find traces of the ancient Negro. For when the Japanese armies in the 8th century, now here I'm paraphrasing, when the Japanese armies in the 8th century were fighting their traditional enemy, the Ainu, they were led by a famous Negro general named Sakanoye Tomomoraro. And this man became the first shogun in uh, Japanese history. Also in Malaysia, when I went down to Malaysia, I went into the rainforest over there. And it's very difficult to get over to some of these spots. Some of these people there are very secluded. And because they're secluded, they were able to avoid many natural disasters and they were also able to avoid invasions. So they didn't mix in with some of the invading forces. So they kept their same African phenotype. And if you go to Malaysia, there's a tribe called the Batek tribe. And they look like an African tribe. If you go there, they have woolly hair, African nose, lips, everything about these people look like, looks like an African tribe. One of the things we know about white supremacy and light skin supremacy, because even when you look at Asia, even when you go to East India, they practice racism. Why? Because all of these places were colonized by the European and their culture infected the people. So one of the things that they do is they also have a tendency to do what? Hide the darker brother. As a matter of fact, there was an incident that happened with Miss Fiji. Um, they had the Miss World competition and they chose this woman to be Miss Fiji. And Miss Fiji has more Europeanized features and the people of Fiji spoke out against her. They weren't really trying to hate on her, but they said, look, this woman doesn't represent us. She doesn't look like us. She doesn't have our nose. She doesn't have our hair. And we're very proud of what we look like, and we want somebody to represent us. Because again, they were trying to use that Europeanized Miss Fiji to bring in tourism and not scare away tourists. But the people spoke out against her. And this just shows that many people around the world, they're proud of their Africoid features. One of the oldest groups of people to inhabit India were a group of black-skinned people called the Dravidians, or the Untouchables. Now, when people think about the history and the culture of India, they oftentimes think of Mahatma Gandhi. And many people give praises and accolades to Mahatma Gandhi because of Dr. Martin Luther King. But what many people do not know is that Gandhi had very racist views towards black people. The truth behind Mahatma Gandhi First of all, I'm reluctant to use the word Mahatma. Mahatma means great soul. And many of my Indian colleagues would say he wasn't even an ordinary soul, much less a great soul. The late great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. put that picture of Mahatma Gandhi up in his office and said that he got the operational technique for nonviolence from Mahatma Gandhi. It was somewhat premature for the ancestor, uh, who's one of my favorites, but it was premature because now you automatically set the stage where African people would start looking to Mahatma Gandhi also. For example, last spring, last Black History Month, I was in Atlanta. I went to the Dr. Martin Luther King Shrine where he and Queen Mother Coretta, Coretta are buried, and across the street is a museum. Outside the museum is a lifestyle statue of Mahatma Gandhi. I couldn't believe it. This is a museum dedicated to the honor of Dr. King. But there's no statue of Dr. King outside of a museum erected in his honor. Instead, you have a life-size statue of Mahatma Gandhi. So the message to the child is what? That it was really Mahatma Gandhi who's responsible for you coming through the civil rights struggle, not Dr. King. Now, had Dr. King knew Mahatma Gandhi's true racist thinking and ideology, I'm sure he would have thought otherwise. As a psychologist, you can never know how what's really at the root of somebody's thinking. I would argue that we should never make a hero of any other people. Mahatma Gandhi turned his back on Africans even when he came back to India and began fighting. He refused to give support to the African emancipation movements. And on more than one occasion, he had made derogatory remarks about Africans. And we also know the Dravidians of India. The Africans of India who are oppressed, were oppressed, and have always been oppressed in India. There is no record anywhere of Mahatma Gandhi fighting against the oppression of Indians in India who were black, the so-called Dravidians. Why didn't he speak out for them? Why didn't he speak out for, for Africans who were fighting against colonialism? Why didn't Mahatma Gandhi help our brothers and sisters in South Africa? It's because he was a racist like the rest of them. First of all, 
Australia itself is the world's second smallest continent, second only after Antarctica. Um, it's the smallest inhabited continent. The name Australia means Great South Land. And the first people of Australia were the people we call Aboriginal Australians, commonly called black fellas. And of course, you have different names, the Koori, the Guri, the Noongar, and various names. The people of Australia, originally Australia was an African land. In fact, in European documentation, they considered it an African satellite. When they came, when the British came into Australia and began the mass extermination of African people, they were crystal clear who they were exterminating because they said it. And, um, and also we know that right off the coast of Australia was an island called Tasmania, a little island off the coast of Tasmania. There are no living Tasmanians in existence right now. You can't find a Tasmanian man, woman, or child because the British systematically exterminated the entire population. It wasn't until January 1967 that Aboriginal people in Australia were considered humans for the first time. In January 1967, there was a national referendum to decide if Aboriginal Australians should have Australian citizenship. Up to that point, they were officially, and you can document this, classified as flora and fauna and plants and animals. In Australia, they would literally breed out the melanin of the people. You know, they would have these, they would take the children and take them to breeding camps and breeding farms and breed the darker ones and the mulatto ones with white. And they would literally breed the melanin out of these people. The movie Rabbit Proof Fence is about that breeding process, them breeding out the melanin of the Aboriginal people. So it was very deep what was going on over there. You have three major island chains, North Pacific, West Pacific, and South Pacific, Me Melanesia, Polynesia, Micronesia. Melanesia is the South Pacific. Those are, that means the black islands. And the biggest island is New Guinea. Others include New Caledonia, New Ireland, New Britain, um, Fiji, um, the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, which used to be known as New Hebrides. These are the Black Islands. And the people that I've encountered um, in this part of the world tend to say they come from Africa. People tend to have very, very Africoid features, dark skin, uh, tightly curled hair, you know, large Afros, we call them today. Many of them say they come from Africa, especially in Fiji and also in Buka Island. And I ask the people, where, where do you come from? We come from Africa. And they're very matter of fact about it. Buka, B-U-K, means black skin. And they have the reputation of being the blackest human beings on earth. So quite naturally, that was where I wanted to lay my head. at images of King Kamehameha, and I know you have, the, who is the, what might be considered the founder of Hawaii. It's like the founding father of Hawaii. Clearly, clearly Africa. One of the most famous Hawaiians is a guy named Duke Kahanamoku. Um, Duke was one of the forefathers of modern surfing, and they would use Duke to promote tourism in Hawaii. Um, they would send Duke to the continental United States to promote swimming in Hawaii and surfing, and Duke had problems getting into swimming areas when he came to the continental U.S. because people thought that he was black because he was so dark, and many of the native Hawaiians, they have that dark, African phenotype. If you go to places like Maui and some of the remote areas of Hawaii, you, they look like black people, just like Samoans. You go to Samoa, they look like black people over here in America. I was, I'm doing an interview, a call-in thing, and somebody called in and says, you know, I'm a Hawaiian. And he says, the problem was you just didn't meet the right people. I said, really? He says, when I was a young boy, my grandmother used to tell me that when Kamehameha was trying to unite the Hawaiian Islands, this is around 1815, 
that he ran into trouble and he sent back to Africa for reinforcements. He said that was a Hawaiian tradition. <laughs> 